Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-56. The previous episode featured the group learning that Karina had understood more about the deceased captain of the Watch than any other person in her life so far. Struggling from her broken heart, she rejoined the group to pick out mounts at the local stables. Both the party and the manager took liberties with racial tensions, but managed to resolve the issue quickly. The group picked out some mounts, except for Bolger, who, despite having a Palomino take a shine to him, was slated to leave in the morning on the wagon train. We rejoined the group at dusk in the town square where the funeral services for Captain Edward Tolley and Guardsman Morak were being held. Pastor Lauren is officiating. And that is all we can ask from any one of us. The willingness to do what is right, when it is the right time to do it, is the greatest calling any of us can perform. Dilo, we commit the souls of these fine men into your arms so that they may join the ranks of your infinite army. We say this in your name. A chorus of praise Dilo is murmured throughout the assembled crowd. Two bodies lay wrapped in white linen inside two wooden boxes in front of the church. The acolyte, Brother Sestern, emerges from the interior of the church carrying a candle that glows blue in the dimming light. Two guards, dressed in clean clothing, approach Pastor Lauren, with Sister Elaine standing behind him. He turns, nodding to the cleric, who steps forward. Each of them take a torch from the kneeling guards and light it from the blue candle. The torches spark into fire, and the pair approach the bodies as the guards rejoin the ranks of their brethren. Dilo, we trust you, we love you, we have faith in your decisions. Despite the hurt as it caused us all, the pastor finishes the service and nods to Sister Elaine, and they both set the bodies on fire with the torches. As the flames leap across the corpses, it turns blue and gold and quickly consumes the two bodies, but not the treated wooden coffins. Low sobbing is heard, and tears flow freely down the face of the waif as she watches the body of Edward Tolley go up in flames. So ends the service, proclaims Pastor Lauren who shakes the hand of Sister Elaine for her assistance. He and Sestern pull up chairs and wait for the bodies to be consumed before interning them into bone boxes to be placed in the catacombs below the temple, as is the custom in the frontier. Sister Elaine rejoins the group as she stashes her mourning neck piece, and the group looks at Karina with concern, and she notices them. Sniffling a bit, she waves off the attention, stating that she would be fine. A few moments of silence followed, but was broken by Lady Arena, who inquired as to the burial rites. Cabe Silvertongue added his questions about the blue light caused by the flame. While the cleric attempted to pass it off as rituals, the elves continued to pepper her with questions pertaining to the scientific aspects of the rites. The holy woman gave a vague overview of the principles of Dilo, and clearly did not want to talk about it further, but neither the mage nor the bard were picking up on the subtle clues. As the pair continued to ask questions, Bulger finally spoke up with a loud, Bah! The smarter people get, the dumber they get. Can't you see that the Reverend Daughter doesn't want to discuss the details with you two? The unabashed approach from the gnome caused both Lady Irena and Cabe to become flustered. The pair began to furiously apologize, but were stopped by Sister Elaine, who excused it as a non-issue, but thanked Bulger for his input. He smiled and smacked Fargus on the side. Come on, big man. Let's go find us a drink and not break any hearts this time. The ranger shook his head but followed Bolger over to the keg surrounded by the guards. The group watched as a pair spoke with the guards who made an opening and allowed the two to drink with them. Cabe turned to the others and asked their opinions. The general consensus was that the fighter had his own code and that was probably best that everyone else refrained from the reception. The group opted to move down the road to the tavern that they had previously visited and sat outside in the warm air discussing what the future held. 
Karina had returned to the Comstock Inn and picked up peepers to accompany her. The axe beak was still very young, but looked like it had already put on some weight. As the group sat, people would stop by and slowly pet the large bird, who quickly tired of all the attention and laid down at the waif's feet. From their seats, they could observe the guards laughing and joking with Fargus and Bolger, who appeared to be telling a tall tale, causing the ranger to laugh. I'm going to miss that gnome, remarked Sister Elaine. He had a very positive effect on Fargus. The group nodded in agreement, and Lady Irena remarked that it was much needed since the loss of... But her words were choked in her throat. She, the cleric, and the bard stopped speaking and looked down to their mugs with sadness in their eyes. Karina sensed the mood shift and raised her mug to what? To what? Welby? The others looked at her and each cracked a smile. Joining her mug, they all tapped together and repeated, To Welby. A few moments later, Fargus joined the group, laughing and holding a tall mug of ale. <laughs> you should hear what that sawed-off runt said, laughed the man. I swear he's lying, but he tells one hell of a good story. Pulling over a chair, he joined the party and inquired what they were all talking about. Karina advised the halfling, and that dampened the mood immediately. Fargus looked into his mug and took a long swig, shaking his head. <laughs> that guy, that guy could tell a tale or two. Damn him for dying. The ranger took another long pull off his drink and invited the group over to come join them. They politely declined and Fargus headed back towards the group, yelling at the others that he thought Bulger smelled too badly to join because the guards doubled over in laughter. Bulger sniffed his armpits and shrugged his shoulders, downing another drink before waggling his mug for a refill. Peepers jumped up and began to look around the dark street. The sitting group noticed, but did not observe anything. Cabe remarked nothing seemed amiss, but then a tremor began to grow under everyone's feet. Squinty and the bard peered into the darkness, but showed no signs of recognition. The guards in the street obviously felt the rumbling as well, and began to maintain their balance. Cabe and Lady Irena jumped from their seats and began to yell frantically, STAMPEDE! The guards grabbed Fargus and Bulger, dragging them out of the street, as a herd of bison came into view. Peepers yanked at his tether and dragged Karina to safety against the wall with the cleric, mage, and bard right behind them. A few minutes passed as the herd drove through town with some damage but no reported injuries. The magistrate quickly ran down the street making sure no one was hurt. When asked if this issue happened a lot, the pale leader responded, No, never. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.